Well, good morning. Welcome back to Linda's Pantry. All you pantry peeps out there. Hello. Okay, so I wanted to look at these guys. They're all staring at me. What's she going to do next? And I'm out of dog biscuits because, I'm sorry, because, <laughs> um, no, I don't have any in there. Because Costco was out, and that's where I buy them. Anyway, but I wanted to tell you about my beef jerky. Now, I'm getting ready to go to work, so I'm not going to take this off yet. I did send some with my book. This is perfect. It only took six hours. So, it's so good, too. Oh, my gosh. It's still got a bend to it, you know, um, so it's chewy. About 80% of the water is gone. If you go 100%, it's just going to flake apart. Not good. So, I've got hair this morning, and then I'm going to take Michael's truck to get smog. So, I've got to warm that big Dodge up. Anyway, <laughs> and take it to get smogged and registered. And, oh, there's my girl, Shotzi, too. Yes, you're not going to stay inside, I don't think. Maybe I will leave you in. Because you're a good girl in the house, huh? Yes, you are. You're my girl. And Buddy is outside. He's so cute. Oh my gosh, him and Ragnar play so hard. Ragnar pushes the ball at him like, come on, let's go. And Buddy will chase him. It's hilarious. So anyways, they have a pretty good time together. I'm going to go outside. It's supposed to only be 53 today, so I think it's probably chilly out there. Buddy will be on the, he'll be on the porch. You watch. He'll be right here on this porch. Well, there he is. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, my buddy. Hi. Oh, goodness. Let's get get that toy. Get that baby. Get that baby. Get it. Get it. <laughs> He's good. He'll take that toy. Get it. you get that toy. Yes. <laughs> he loves to play. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's cold out here. And the dogs have all of my garden tools that they could get a hold of. Ragnar drags them across the lawn. Seriously? So when I get home this afternoon, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. And we're partly cloudy. Looks like it could rain. When I get home, come on. You guys are going right back out. I don't know what you're, for, what you're talking about. Uh, 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 uh. Go outside. Outside. Come on. Go outside. Go outside and argue. Go on outside, Sage. Come on. And I think Buddy has lost a pound or two because I can actually feel a rib. <laughs> Way in there, but I can feel it. More than I could. Oh, they're not listening. I'm not I'm not paying attention either. Okay, so anyway, um <laughs> he likes his dark food. Plain and um I do once a day give him just maybe just a little tiny bite of turkey breast because I feel like he doesn't get anything. But my new favorite breakfast on the planet is black beans heated up with a green chili verde salsa and a poached egg. Oh my gosh, or a, a egg over easy. Absolutely delicious. Okay, so, um, and somebody asked me what the carbs were on the black bean salsa, or black bean pasta. <laughs> Sorry, I got salsa on the brain. Um, the carbs are just like any other. There are higher carbs, but because your body um, absorbs the, and digests the black beans differently, it, it doesn't spike your blood sugar. So for diabetics, black beans are really good for them. But research that on your own. I'm not a, I'm not a dietitian and I'm not a doctor. The pasta, Michael loved it. Me? Not so much. I'm not a big pasta fan in the first place, but this... Instead of having a soft chew, it, it felt like it crumbled. Like, yeah, I didn't care for it. Um, I probably won't spend the money on that again, except for Michael. Um, it won't be something that I eat. <laughs> anyway, um, so that note to self. I think, and I was going over in my mind, how could you make that bind better? I think it needs an egg. I'm sorry, if you're going to do pasta, you need an egg in there to bind the, the flour. So, and there's no egg in it, it's just black beans, so. Okay, are we ready for work? I think we are. I got, oh, I gotta get my stuff. I need my lunch. I'm gonna bring some soup, because it's cold. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna share that, so. 
I'll have a cup and then there'll be three cups left for somebody else. I've got a half of a wrap, a half of an apple and an orange, half of an orange. So get my fruits and veggies in. And what's for dinner? Oh my gosh, I think we're gonna have elk. Um, I've got an elk steak out and I might make like a grilled steak salad or something like that. And I have, okay, get this done. And then, okay, so the questions, I cut the clip out of yesterday's vlog about where I talked about a freeze dryer. I would love to have a freeze dryer to bring you content on how to preserve using a freeze dryer. They're very expensive. And I, I, the company contacted me a while back when they first came out on the market, the Harvest Right freeze dryers. They contacted me and they didn't want to sponsor, but they would give me a discount. So I think what I'm going to do, if you guys want to be involved and you want to be part of this whole freeze drying, I would love for us to do it together. And so what I'm gonna do is, my address is down below. You can use my address or you can use PayPal, but I prefer you use the address. And um, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope so I can um, send you something back. Um, you don't even have to put a stamp on it. Just send me your address on an envelope. And uh, any donations that you make, let's say you donate a dollar to the cause, I will match that dollar. And when we hit the amount, we're gonna buy a freeze dryer, okay? Um, and I'm not asking any of you to donate money or unless you wanna be involved in this. Um, and there will be a drawing for anybody that I'll be putting everybody's name and address into a hat um, and there'll be a drawing for some goodies that are going to come from that and so uh, anyway that's that's my thought process I figured that if we all did it together as peeps we could I mean how many of you out there are there there's a ton of you I've got over a hundred thousand subscribers now granted not all of you watch every day but if just the daily people watched, we'd have our freeze dryer tomorrow if everybody gave a dollar. So, um, anyways, that's my process. Okay, come on, buddy, get your rope and let's go. Uh, okay, guys, I'm home and I, um, it's what, it's, a, it's about quarter after two and got the truck smogged and registered and pay $10 and they send it in and the tag comes in a couple of days. So I did before work go to Walmart because I cannot find my pruning nippers like these. And I like the Fisker brand. So anyways, I got these because I need to snip back some stuff. Oh, and I just went out and looked at my kale and my lettuce that I planted the other day. The birds have stripped all the leaves off the kale so they look like sticks sticking out of there. Anyways. <laughs> And I bought two more dozen of the uh, sure tight lids. They still don't have any regular size. Um, I'm going to go online and see if they have them. But we're going to use these today in our canning session. And I'm going to uh, put the remainder of my lunch away. I had a cup of soup at work. And Michelle had some. She really liked it. It's so good. Anyway, um, I ate a couple of my apple pieces. But... If I get hungry later, I can snack on this. I'm, I'm not hungry, so the soup is pretty filling. Soup is really good for you. So, I'm gonna put these away. These are supposed to have extra leverage. Hmm. Oh, look at that, snazzy. They feel pretty good. Okay, so I am going to, I'm gonna try to get some yard work done tomorrow. Um, because I need to weed eat. Michael can't weed eat one-handed. I don't know why I, he can't rig a strap to go around his neck. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's probably, there is probably a strap that you could bring up, but I'm gonna weed eat while Robert and him go to uh, get some more dad's stuff. And then, um, yeah, 
So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, and let me show you. I'm going to show you how, what I got for beef jerky. And I ate a piece, too. Maybe that's why I'm not hungry. Okay, so here's what, the beef jerky. And this is a nice amount. I mean, Michael can have it. You know, we can have a piece or two every day um, with our lunch uh, as a snack or whatever. I'll pull up a piece. It is really, really nice. Um, and, oh. It's still got a little flexibility. <laughs> Sorry. Mmm. So good. Okay. I'm going to snack on that. And I'm going to go get my All-American canner. My jars have been washed, but I do want to heat them back up because I'm going to put hot soup in hot jars. So I'll heat them back up in the sink um, and then, or in the canner itself and steam them for a while. And then they'll be ready to put the hot soup in. They're as sterile as they need to be because canning, if you're canning, even if you're water bath canning for 10 minutes or longer, you've pretty much sterilized your jar. I still sanitize them in the dishwasher every single time I can, but they've got a chance to cool down. So that being said, we turned our dehydrator around. So that's the way it faces when it's not in use. And then um, when it is in use, I turn it this way. What else? Okay, I think that's it. I think we're gonna go ahead and um, get to canning. You wanna come along? All right. Uh, in my All American, um, my lids, I still heat my lids uh, because that's, that's who I am. I'm using three of the Wide Mouth um, Sure Seal or whatever they're calling them. They're gonna last for 18 months. So these jars are hot and clean and ready for soup and then when you open this soup after it's been pressure canned um you're gonna add your heavy cream or your milk or whatever you'd like to add to it and it'll actually make a little bit more soup too so there's plenty in here for two to three people big servings um i can split a, a quart of soup with three people but my husband hmm, not so much we need one inch of head space and that's because we're pressure canning and Go ahead and deep bubble because you know it's always best to deep bubble. Just make a good habit, right? We wipe with a damp, clean napkin. Check the rim of your jar one last time, and these are gonna wait in the pressure canner until I am ready to get the. Once I get them all in there, then I'm gonna bring put the lid on. Bring it up and let it vent for 10 minutes. And venting is out of the petcock um, steam will vent out of there. And that gets all the air pockets that are cold in the canner out and gets the temperature all even throughout the canner. Then you can put your weight on after that 10 minutes. For my altitude, it is 15 pounds. I believe my exact altitude is 13, but because the weight has a 10 by 10, 15, we've used the 15 and I make sure it sits there. This is gonna pressure can for a half hour. So if it was pints, it would be 20 minutes. All right. Okay guys, so I decided, hmm, I better enlarge my project. <laughs> I got seven quarts in here and three pints. And I was hoping I was gonna get five pints, but that's okay, three pints. I didn't wanna waste it and I didn't wanna have that soup again tonight. And that puts it on the shelf for later. I can always make soup. Um, so that I feel really good about that. And I'll probably share a couple quarts, like I said. And now I'm cleaning up the mess, the pots and pans. And my Cuisinart pots, they will get water spots on them. Uh, we have really hard water. So I take and um, I dry them off by hand as soon as I'm done washing them. So I got to do that. And let's see, I'm catching up on videos. I really want to go outside and um, trim up some stuff. So I might do that, but I'm going to make sure that my canners have run their course before I do that. And if I don't, I'll get it done in the morning. I've got to, I'm going to get up and get at it with the yard work. It's okay, so this one, they both vented for 10 minutes. And this one, of course, came up first and after. It, this one's at about 10 pounds to go. Um, this one's at 15 pounds. 
and you can see it's not jiggling solid. I adjust my stove down a little bit. Sits right almost at a six, and this camera just loves that spot. So the timer is on whoops, for 20 minutes, and we'll see what comes up. Now, I did hear something pop after I just said I've never had jars break, um, except in the beginning. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully we can have a jar broken. But we are going to have soup on the shelf regardless. So that's how we do it. And when you're putting these lids on, you want to make sure that the gap there is kind of even. Vaseline around the lid and put your thumb screws opposite of each other all on lightly and then tighten them down. See, it's jiggling too much. I'm going to turn the stove down up just a hair, very slightly, until we get that perfect sweet spot. It's not going above 15 pounds, but it really only needs to jiggle like a couple times a minute. Okay, guys, so, oh, Shotzi, I just let Buddy out. He's wanting to be outside. It's cold and windy, but, so my canners have come down off of pressure, and it doesn't take this one lo that long to cool down, where it does that one. I, it's so weird. It takes that one way more time to heat up, and um, this one not so much, it's, and then they're kind of the opposite coming back down off of pressure, but. So what I do is after it's come all the way down to zero, I then take the weight off and you'll have a little excess, just a little hissing coming out of there. It, that's normal. And then I let it sit with the lid still, all these thumb screws still in place for at least five minutes. And then I go ahead and I take all the thumb screws loose the same way I did them across from each other. And um, Caddy Womp the lid. Caddy Womp is a new word. Anyways, for about five to ten minutes because you want what's in the canner to come down off of that heat. 240 degrees is extremely hot. You want it to come down off the heat slowly so you don't have siphoning out of your jars. It's worth this weight. And the other thing I'm going to tell you, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, but I know Tulilu does. <clears throat> the time that you start bringing it up to pressure and coming down off of pressure, and even this time frame, is all a part of the canning process. You have to let it happen. Because if you don't, you can lose your product. You can have an unsuccessful or... If you rush it, what if you don't kill the botulism spores that might be in there? Now, you don't put botulism in there. It's a naturally occur occurring spore that happens with food and vegetables that are either in the ground or on the ground that are grown. So you can't tell by looking at them or you can't even test them to see and um, they don't need oxygen to grow. So. You want to make sure you kill that. And the only thing that can kill that is 240 degrees. And that the reason these canners get up to that temperature is because there's enough space in there. Each canner can hold four quarts standing up, at least. This one holds seven, but that one can hold four quarts standing up. And um, it, it can get the heat all the way through this to the center of the jars. So this one is ready. Let's see what happened in here. I'm like, oh, it smells good. You always smell your canning going on. Oh, let's get a look-see. Ooh, it looks pretty. Look it. Ooh, tomato soup. Oof, is that beautiful? And look at that headspace. Now, everybody brags about their headspace. Don't tip your jars, number one. Everybody brags about their headspace, and I'm bragging right now. But don't don't be a Braggerton because guess what? And see now our our lit, our rings loosen in the canning process. It's just to keep the lid down. It'll seal when it forms that vacuum as it cools. Um, that's why you never want to grab by that ring because if it's not on there, 
you can drop your jar, you grab below the ring. The head space is gonna change a little bit um, if it's very expanded. Ooh, I hear jars pinging. Mm, I'm so excited, it smells wonderful. But you'll note my water is clear because I let it come down off of pressure slowly. I let it go to pressure slowly and I, I let it do this little step. And I think it's super important. They're still extremely hot. It's not like you're letting it cool down. And you never want to let it sit in that canner after it's been canned and keep that hot temperature for too long um, because you'll cause flat sour. Flat sour will make your food taste terrible and you will not eat it, trust me. I don't care how hungry you are. So, okay, I'm about ready to take this big old giant lid off. Let's do that and see what we have in this can. This has got our quart jars. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, is this the one? I don't know. The water doesn't look as clear to me. This may have been the one I heard a pop. And we may have a broken jar. I don't know. Not that one. And this is a jar from the store. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, it's so pretty. Let's see. Yeah. And we just may have siphoning. That one's okay. <laughs> I, I honestly, I have not had a jar break. I don't think any of these are broken. But I did hear a pop, and I'm not sure what that was. So, lovely. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Don't tip your jars because you want, it, product can still get up under that lid. Look at that's boiling. Beautiful, okay. Seven quarts. This one siphoned a little bit. That's why the water is not perfect. That one siphoned just a little bit. And you know what? You can fill your jars exactly and in one canner load have one jar that siphons and not another. So it's so it's odd. I don't know why that happens, but there you go. And this video is gonna be extremely long because I want you to see that all of them are perfect. And ooh, it's so beautiful. And I think we should be putting stuff back on our shelf, honest and truly. I know I hate being a scaredy make scaredy pants. And that's all that's what happened is that one jar siphoned some liquid, but no broken jars. Thank you. <laughs> My record is clean. And look at that to go on the pantry shelf. Unbelievable. I'm so excited. And I'm glad that I got to bring you along for that. I hope it inspires you to go ahead, try your hand at home canning. It is rewarding. I'm sharing with my family something that's homemade and came from the heart and I know what's in there. I know that we love it. I don't have to question, ooh, I'm gonna buy this, but I don't know if I'm gonna like it. Or you do buy it and it's not something you really like. So jars are pinging already. So that's what I did today and I, I'm glad you came along for my blog. And as always guys, I'm gonna say goodnight because it's been long enough, I know that. And I can't wait to see you next time. Well, let's see. Next time is going to be tomorrow. <laughs> and um, go down and check the links below. I'll try to leave a link to an all-American canner because they're a Cadillac of canners. I don't think you can get anything better. There's lifetime warranty. Unless you run that canner dry, it will last you a lifetime and go on into your children and your children's children's lifetime. And they can can as well. And hopefully we get to teaching our kids how to do this. I did teach my daughter how to water bath. Um, so anyway, there you go. And now everybody's got the video. You know how to do it. Do it. I dare you. Okay, next on the list. Remember, if you want freeze drying in our future, you know what to do. All right, guys. Mwah. Bye. I just think these jars came out absolutely beautiful.